students to this session uh, this is the continuation of orbit 1 lecture a2 orbit 2 our goal of learning in this will be to classify various types of orbital tumors to differentiate their symptoms and signs at presentation and to list the investigations which are helpful for diagnosis of the orbital tumors and the indications for appropriate referral the common clinical manifestation of orbital tumors is mainly proptosis. There could also be visual disturbance before proptosis in optic nerve tumors like meningiomas. Pain could be present in lesions which are either rapidly expanding or they are involving the nerves like adenocystic carcinoma of the lacrimal gland. Motility disturbances can happen if the orbital apex or the nerves or the muscles are involved. Inflammatory signs are uh, rare but could be present in cystic lesions of the orbits. Pupillary changes could be present if optic nerve is being compressed. Now if you classify the orbital tumors, they can be classified into primary orbital or metastatic secondary orbital tumors. The primary orbital tumors are actually arising from the tissues of the orbit itself. The cystic lesions of the orbit, vasculogenic lesions, peripheral nerve tumors, optic nerve tumors or meningeal tumors. Connective tissue tumors, cartilaginous tumors, they can be myogenic or lacrimal gland tumors or melanocytic tumors. The metastatic cancers to the orbits are most commonly leukemias and lymphomas or breast CAs or other kind of tumors. Now coming to the incidence of tumors. If we look at the orbital tumors or orbital tumor simulating lesions, the most common lesions are actually vasculogenic lesions or the cavernous hemangiomas in adults. In children, it is usually dermoid cyst or capillary hemangioma which is the most common tumor. But in adults, the most common is cavernous hemangioma. The second most common lesions are the lacrimal gland lesions which can be most commonly non-epithelial lesions or pseudotumors. The third common ones are the optic nerve or the meningeal tumors that is optic nerve glioma which is most common out of the optic nerve tumors. Cystic lesions are uh, follow that and the dermoid cyst is the most common cystic lesion of the orbit followed by myxoid lesions and other myogenic and peripheral nerve tumors. Incidence of the metastatic tumors is around 7% out of which most common is breast CA followed by prostrate CA followed by lymphoma and leukemias. Now talking about the cystic lesions of the orbit. The cystic lesions can be of surface epithelium like simple epithelial cysts, epidermal cyst, conjunctival, respiratory or apocrine gland cysts. The more common type of cysts that actually present in the orbit is dermoid cysts which are epidermal cysts that happen inside the orbit. Second is teratomatous cysts that is a teratoma. Third can be neural cysts due to ocular maldevelopment which constitute of congenital cystic eye or the colobomatous cyst. They can be associated with the brain or meningeal tissue like a cephalocele or a meningocele. Secondary cysts that can happen are because of the adjacent structure. So you know above the orbit is the brain. So encaphalocele can happen. Here are the sinuses. So a mucocele can happen and below the maxillary sinus are the teeth. So a dentigerous cyst can happen. Other non-cystic orbital lesions that can have a cystic component, they are adenocystic cancer, the rhabdomyosarcoma or the lymphangioma. Dermoid is actually a choestoma which means that a tissue is displaced into an abnormal position. Here epidermis is placed, displaced below the skin. So therefore a cyst is formed containing keratinized epithelium. It could have hair, sebaceous glands, sebaceous secretions and it is 46% of all the 
childhood orbital neoplasms the clinical presentation it is a slowly growing cyst that is usually present beneath the skin inside the orbit and it is usually attached to a a place where two bones of the orbit unite the dermoid cyst is usually attached at one place otherwise it is fairly mobile inside inside of the skin the management is complete surgical removal you cannot spill the contents of a dermoid cyst inside the orbit because if you spill it there will be intense granulomatous reaction now talking about hydrated cyst hydrated cyst is actually the cyst which is formed due to echinococcus granulosus the primary host of echinococcus granulosus is dog and the definitive host is actually man when man acts as a intermediate host the hydrated cyst it forms the uh, there is a history of contact and the cassoni's test is usually positive in the hydrated cyst on ct scan you will be able to see a cystic mass which is with the density same as that of water so there is a cystic mass with similar uh, density as that of the eye and uh, the best treatment is surgical excision with post operative steroids and anti helminthics orbital cysticercosis is also common the muscles of the orbit so here you can see that this is the eye and behind the eye inside the muscle there is a cyst which has a hyper intense lesion inside of the cyst which is the scoliosis of the uh, cysticercus so cysticercus cellulose is the larvae of the pork tapeworm that is tinea solium they can invade the eye or they can be present in the muscle the diagnosis is usually made on history and examination and on ultrasound it the cyst can be present inside the eye under the retina or in the muscles if it is present in the muscle you give oral steroids with albendazole plus minus ivermectin or if it is in the retina you have to go and do a vitreous surgery to remove the subretinal cyst colobomatous cyst of the eye so this is a congenital cystic eyeball it is a developmental malformation of the eyeball where there is developmental arrest of the eyeball of the primary optic vesicle between 2 mm to 7 mm stage of the fetal development so the eye does not form we know that the uh, optic vesicle actually it invades upon itself so that the lens vesicle comes in and then the cornea forms over and the lens and the layers of the retina form so when this optical vesicle is not able to invade and it form a double layered vesicle then there is a congenital cystic eye that develops when you open the eyelids of such a child there is only a abnormal cystic tissue that is present inside wherein tumors can develop at a later age so you might have to remove the congenital cystic eye and put an artificial eye now talking about the vasculogenic tumors in the vasculogenic tumors there are 17% of all orbital tumors in adults cavernous hemangioma is most common vasculogenic tumor in adults and capillary hemangioma most common vascular tumor in children so talking about capillary hemangioma it is the most common hematoma of childhood where there is a port wine stain that is actually present on the child's eyelid it can be associated with sturge weber syndrome or it can be associated with glaucoma which has to be evaluated the presentation is usually within 6 months supramedial if it is inside the orbit usually supramedial orbit is involved it is proliferation of the new vessel growth that happens and spontaneous resolution happens in 70% by 7 years in capillary hemangiomas the uh, systemic associations as i've already told you there can be cutaneous uh, hemangiomas along with liver hemangiomas along with there can be uh, hemangiomas in the brain it can also lead to high output heart failure it can be associated with kasabak merit syndrome or mafuchi syndrome on ultrasound you have to determine the anatomical relations and extent of the tumor and the treatment is usually required 
for removal of the capillary hemangioma especially if it is causing ptosis and there is a risk of amblyopia nowadays the with introduction of use of propanolol in cases of capillary hemangiomas has made the surgical excision uh, very rare and uh, propanolol or intralesional steroids or interferon alpha 2b can be used to reduce the size of capillary hemangiomas until it uh, spontaneously regresses cavernous hemangiomas are most common vascular tumors of adults usually present in 40 to 50 years on ultrasound there is a regular outlined mass uh, which is present behind the eyeball causing proptosis so here this man who presents with painless proptosis had a mass which was sitting right behind the eyeball and on ct scan there was a minimal it is usually intraconal it displaces the optic nerve and it is uh, managed by surgical excision of the tumor lymphangiomas are also called chocolate cysts these are benign tumors of lymphatic vascular channels which present usually in early childhood as tumors which cause intermittent proptosis related with uri why does the intermittent proptosis occur because development of hemorrhage usually occurs in the tumor leading to formation of chocolate cysts so there is a cystic pattern on ultrasound surgically you have to debulk the lesions diffuse lesions are difficult to excise sclerotherapy can also be done or laser can be used to reduce the size of the uh, lymphangiomas orbital varix is a rare tumor which is formed by low flow veins mm -hmm.